Hello everybody, in this video I will present you some elements about watchOS 3 and watchOS 3 programming and how to develop an app, a watch app, an application that goes in the Apple Watch. What is the Apple Watch? I have one here. It's a companion to a phone device. And in fact, the idea is uh, to have some operations that you can do on your watch uh, and you can maybe drive some applications, you can watch things, etc, etc. For example, when you get a SMS and the phone is in your pocket, you can watch it here, uh, or you can watch whether, whatever, and of course you have an interaction between the phone. Because all the outside communication so far uh, within the current versions of the Apple Watch are just under by the telephone and you have a um, connection, a wireless connection between the phone and the uh, uh, watch. The first uh, operating system uh, that was operated on the Apple Watch was WatchOS 1 and in fact apart the uh, Apple's apps no application was executed on the Apple Watch. Only on the telephone, via, by means of a sort of extension, and only the display was deported on the watch. From Apple Watch 2, it's now possible to execute your code directly on the watch, uh, and uh, some elements like image can also be located in the watch. And you have, of course, to be careful because you have even less CPU in your watch than in your phone, less memory in your watch than in your phone, and less battery in your watch than in your phone, etc, etc. So, what are the interactions between the phone and the watch? Uh, in fact, uh, the phone may send notification and requests uh, to the watch to be displayed on the watch. And of course, uh, the watch may require uh, network information, uh, data, uh, GPS location, etc, etc. So basically this is the idea. And of course, uh, even uh, if your phone is far from your watch, if uh, both are connected to a wireless network, you may have, I said far, of course it's just meters or tens of meters, okay, uh, then your uh, watch and your telephone uh, may still uh, communicate together. So that's the philosophy. So you have two sizes of watches. The big one, 42 millimeters, and this is uh, the number of pixels, the size in pixel you have and the size in points. And the small one, 38 millimeters, this is the size in pixel and the size in points. Uh, you can see that it's 2x, so it's a retina display, but then everything you will provide is in twice as big as what you display because one point here is two pixels. So similar to what you have in a classical retina device. The interaction is inspired from the one of iOS, but of course the screen is much smaller, so you must be quite careful in the uh, design of the interface. And in fact, Apple, which is very careful on these aspects, forces you to respect uh, some uh, guidelines, as usual. Uh, the interactive team must be designed specifically because you have elements, this crown here, that are different. And of course, you can imagine uh, that you cannot use the screen as you use the phone. For example, uh, uh, doing this and... Uh, it has not really a signification. And also, of course, power consumption is also a huge concern. So you have lots of restrictions in iOS mechanisms. For example, when you want to fetch a GPS position, uh, you have some specific modes dedicated to the watch because, for example, you cannot have, you, you just retrieve one position. You can have it uh, constantly updated because it consumes too much uh, CPU. So, in fact, when the Apple Watch was created, you had three entry points for a watch app. The main entry point, the notification, you can have dedicated notifications sent by your application that will be displayed specifically on your watch. And you had glance, that was a sort of 
summary of the application. But Glance has been deprecated in WatchOS 3, so it doesn't exist anymore. You just have now two entry points. In Xcode, as for extension, you have to create a new target that will be a WatchOS target, and you will use similar tools, in particular Storyboard, to design your interface. In fact, you're forced to do Storyboard, and the simulator that also allow you to emulate a watch, so you can design a watch app without buying a watch. Of course, as for a regular application, it's much better to see how it works on the, on the watch because you will uh, experiment uh, delays and, and execution in real uh, condition. And etc. etc. All other tools are also available. You have APIs and frameworks and they are derived from those of iOS. In fact, the prefix will change. It will be WK for WatchKit instead of UI for user interface. And of course, lots of restrictions apply. So, what do you have in WatchKit? First, you have WK interface controllers. And you may have several. At least you have one associated to the main entry point. It's which one? This one is required. But you may have several uh, if you want to push several parts of your application. Uh, this component is the equivalent in UIKit of the UI view controller. And you have a WK user notification interface controller for the management of notifications. You have WK interface device that is sort of UI device stuff. So gives you information about the current device, screens bound, screen scale, current locale, that can provide you useful information to determine if you are in a big watch or in a small watch. And you have WK interface objects for all the interface mechanisms. You have a lot of uh, interface elements and uh, every new release of watchOS, Apple is introducing more. And you won't be surprised to see that you have a WK interface button. Uh, you have one here. Uh, yes, these are buttons. These are buttons. You have WK interface label. Okay, you have everywhere. This is a label. And you have a specific label, which is the WK interface date, which is a label that automatically displays the date. You have WK interface group. The WK interface group allows you to arrange and group several interfaces. For example, here you have two buttons aside. In fact, they are most probably inside a group. Okay. This might also provide a group. Okay. That is arranged vertically with this button, this switch, this uh, slider, etc., etc. You have WK interface image. No surprise, equivalent of UI image view. WK interface map here, and you have constraints on the interactions, of course, and limit on the number of annotations you can set. Uh, WK interface slider here. WK interface switch here. Uh, WK interface picker. You have here some pickers with uh, predefined variants. Uh, in fact, this one didn't exist in the uh, first version of uh, watchOS. WK interface table, a simplified sort of uh, UI table view uh, controller. Uh, WK interface timer, which is new, that that's a, a sort of label that includes a countdown. Okay, and then you can uh, trigger things, etc., etc. Uh, and WK interface separator, this line is typically a separator. And a WK interface activity ring, I don't have one display, but you know, these rings are the rings, uh, the progression rings that you can see, uh, for example, with the uh, sport uh, applications. And, oh, I have to do uh, that many uh, distance by running, and you have uh, it's uh, circular. Okay, and now you have a dedicated mechanism to create these. In the first version, you have to do it by hand. It was a little bit painful. Of course, all these objects have common attributes, as for uh, views, uh, eight, width, alpha, hidden, etc., etc. I suggest you to go to the fantastic manual to see more about these attributes. 
You also have in the watch a main menu that can host up to four buttons. And these buttons, you can associate to them actions, actions that are located in the main WK interface controller. That's quite simple. You have a sort of watch extension life cycle. So when you are, uh, okay, you have something uh, here, this is the extension. So you are starting uh, requiring the extension to run. Uh, it loads the interface. Then it needs the interface. And so you have a method that is called, uh, which is named init with context. Okay, you will see that uh, in the example. And then uh, you have a display of the interface. So you have view will activate. Then uh, it loading, it's loading elements. So you are manipulating your application, etc. So then it invokes your method potentially. And sooner or later you stop the application and then the method did deactivate is invoked by the uh, system and the application is then suspended. So in fact it's rather similar to the way classical applications uh, are designed. Okay there are numerous changes widgets are a little bit different but okay uh, when you see a WK slider etc okay this sort of reduced version because you have to consider that you have low power, low CPU because you have less batteries, small interface and thus reduced activity. You even have a WK gesture organizer. Of course, there are lots of restrictions and it's not capable to recognize many gestures. Okay, but you have a few gestures that you can uh, also have handle this way in uh, your watch app okay and it also has extensions basically to handle the management of the crown so now i think we are ready for a small example in the next video thank you for your attention see you later